Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime. My name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash malicious compliance where people conform to the letter but not the spirit of a request. If you're new around here please do hit subscribe down below so that you never miss out on another video and if you want to submit your own stories then you could do so by joining the discord in the top link in the description. But for now let's sit back relax and enjoy some malicious compliance. Complain about the delivery driver not following rules and regulations? No problem. My husband and a couple of our friends have many stories from working at a certain pizza delivery chain. This is one of them. A little backstory to help put this in perspective. Our friend, D, could have been a store slash assistant manager. His district and regional managers wanted him to, but chose to stay a delivery driver for pocket money. This was a side job, he owns his own business. He ended up becoming a fixer, an employee that works for the district slash regional manager, not the store. He went into underperforming stores to determine the problems and fix them. This story happened at one such store. Cast, D is my friend, M my manager, O the other driver and FM facility manager. This particular store had a contract with a state government complex for a pizza order to be delivered every Friday. The way it worked was this place would call in a major pizza order each week, which they received major discounts for because it was government run, non-profit business. They paid with a government purchase voucher and they never tipped. They would tell the drivers they couldn't add tips to the purchase voucher. They actually could put tips on the vouchers, but they never did because the vouchers were attached to a petty cash account and any unused funds at the end of each quarter were given as bonuses to the facility managers. My friend D and my mother both held government jobs at one point, which is why we know this. The facility the pizzas were delivered to was on the fourth floor, and drivers were asked not to use the elevators to deliver food orders, because this would put them coming in through the main lobby, where the facility's clients would see the food coming in. They wanted the drivers to use the stairwells, which came out close to the facility break room. It's also important to know, for later, that there is a security desk in the ground floor lobby, and that the building is air conditioned, except for in the stairwells. So, this one particularly hot summer Friday, the order came in to deliver to this government facility. 20 large pizzas and 10 two liters of various sodas. The other driver got stuck with the delivery, None of the drivers like delivering this standard contract order. He gets to the complex, grabs a push trolley to stack all the food and drinks on, then takes it into the building, where he leaves it at the security desk. He calls the facility to let them know he is there. They have to come check him in with security. They come down and sign him in. He then proceeds to start up the back stairwell to start delivering all of the pizzas. By his fifth trip up the stairs, he's hot. He's covered in sweat. He's tired from going up and down those stairs, and he's starting to get lightheaded too. The security guard takes pity on the other driver and practically orders him to use the hand trolley and the elevator to deliver the rest. The other driver does and delivers the rest, but gets a major tongue lashing from the facility manager for not following the rules about not using the elevator. I'm sorry, ma'am, building security ordered me to do this. He said it was too hot in the stairwells to keep running up them, especially with all of these drinks. I think he was afraid I would pass out. I don't care what you were ordered. You were told not to use the elevator so you wouldn't disturb our clients. The rules and regulations stipulate the elevator is for the use of clients and staff only. I will be calling your manager about this. She shoves the purchase manager into his hands and sends him back down the stairwell. Of course, no tip. By the time O gets back to the store, he is fuming. He's also suffering from a mild case of heat exhaustion. Hey, O, you okay? What's up, dude? Five trips up that damn stairwell carrying this pizza for those people. No effing tip. And then FM rips me a new one because the security guard ordered me to use the elevator for the last trip, so I didn't pass out in the stairwell. About that time, the manager hangs up the phone and comes out of his office. Oh, the driver, you want to tell me what happened? I just got the most irate call from the customer, says you disobeyed government rules and regulations. Customer says you got her in trouble. 
I had to compensate her another 50% off her order, and they are already getting their orders at cost. Monager, I just spent over an hour delivering that order. I spent 45 minutes trudging up and down four flights of stairs five different times in a non-air conditioned stairwell, and I had to deliver their two liters. The security guard told me to use the elevator for the rest of it, before I passed out from heat stroke. And the guard told me there is no regulations against using the elevator. Facility manager just doesn't want us using it so their clients won't see them ordering the pizza for lunch. Well, the next time you deliver there, facility manager demanded you hand over a written apology, on top of my compensating her another extra 50% off their order. I'm not writing that written apology. I refuse to deliver there again. Someone else can take it from now on. So, the next Friday, the government facility calls in their standard order. And because D and O are the only two drivers working the day shift, and O has already stated he refused to deliver to that facility, D got stuck with the delivery. But before he left, he stepped into the manager's office. Hey M, do you have an extra driver's handbook? And a highlighter. Sure. He grabs a handbook and a highlighter and tosses it to him. What do you need that for, D? You know that handbook better than I do. D opens up the handbook, flips to a page and quickly highlights something. He looks up and smiles. It's not for me. He shoves the handbook in his back pocket, loads up the massive order and leaves. My friend gets to the government complex, goes in and grabs a hand trolley, loads up the order then proceeds up the security desk. Security calls for the facility manager to check him in, and he waits, pulling the pizzas out of the bags and setting them on the car. The facility manager comes down to the desk and signs him in. If you could just start running up those stairs, I will meet you there. I'm sorry ma'am, but I'm not allowed past the security desk. You'll need to make arrangements to get the order up there by yourself. What do you mean you can't go back the security desk? You can't expect my girls and me to count all those pizzas and drinks up four flights of stairs. I need you to do this for me. O used to deliver them upstairs for me all the time. Yes ma'am, and he no longer works for the company. He was fired last week when you called to complain because the manager found out he was entering the facility past a security checkpoint. Our corporate rules and regulations don't allow us to go past security checkpoints. That's not a corporate rule, you just made that up. At this point, my friend pulls out the driver handbook, flips it open to the highlighted page and hands it to her. The highlighted portion reads, For the safety of our drivers and our customers, no driver is allowed past a security checkpoint under any circumstances. To do so is a terminable offence. The facility manager's face is going red with apoplexy. You can make an exception, can't you? I will grant you permission. I need you to carry this stuff upstairs for me. That's part of the service. My friend smiled and shook his head. I'm sorry ma'am, but this delivery isn't worth me losing my job. I need this job. Your manager is going to hear about this. I'll cancel my contract with your store if you won't deliver the food upstairs. I'll go with your competitor. That's your choice ma'am. Do you still want this order or should I carry it back? In the end, the facility manager went and got the purchase order and the other women came downstairs to start grabbing pizza and drinks. My friend thanked the facility manager and wished her a good day before he left. The manager was waiting for him when he got back to the store. What happened? Facility manager just cancelled her standing arrangement. She said you were the most unhelpful. Nope, I wasn't. He pulls out the handbook, opens it to the highlighted page and hands it to him. I politely made them carry that entire order upstairs by themselves. Manager gives him a big grin. That's actually good. That arrangement was costing us money anyway. I'm glad to be rid of it. That didn't make any sense to me. Why were they giving the pizzas away for like the price of the cost? So they weren't actually making any profit. I don't know. Can someone explain that to me in the comments, please? Just do what the order says? Okie dokie. I perform medical testing at a doctor's office. Legally, to do a test, it must be ordered by a doctor or mid-level like a nurse or practitioner. Each test is thought of as a prescription and we have to go by what is ordered. Sometimes we get orders that make zero sense and most of our providers are willing to go over them with us. They are human and know they also make mistakes. Example, they request treadmill exercise on someone who can't even walk. 
Part of my job as a tech is to verify the order is correct before I do the test. We always do this as politely as possible. Sir, did you mean to check this box? What do you really want us to do? Most of them are cool with this process. And then there's this one guy who thinks he's God's gift to medicine and women. Oh yeah, and he's married too, with kids, which makes him even a bigger douchebag. So one of his patients shows up for a test and after reviewing the chart, I realized he had checked the wrong box. He had ordered a complete exam on an incomplete body part. I went to him with the order and asked if he could review the chart with me so I could do the right test. Instead of even looking at the patient's name, he snaps, I ordered what I ordered for a reason. Just do the test. Welp, if that's what you want, buddy, you got it. So I did the complete test on the half leg. I typed his report and gave the chart to his assistant so she could bring him in to see Dr. Jerkwad. Five minutes later, he comes storming down to the workroom, waving the chart around looking for me. I thought I told you to do the whole test. Where are the rest of his measurements? He yelled in front of my supervisor and co-workers. I looked him right in the eye and told him, I did exactly what you ordered. You cut off most of that leg. Oh. I guess you could say he didn't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.